everybody in this video i will present how we will behave during this course this course has been improved over several years because it started a long time ago uh, first of all you have to know that this area is quite recent because everything started in 2008 when the sd card of what was called then iphone os now they renamed it iOS 2, uh, was uh, issued uh, by uh, Apple. And uh, before that period, uh, smartphones were relatively uh, static. And the fact that uh, SDK was made public allowed everybody to develop applications and to publish applications available for everybody. And that has totally changed the way smartphones were used uh, because before it was only for uh, dedicated managers with a very few specific tasks. In January 2010, it became obvious that such courses was of interest for master students. And so we tried to introduce some teaching of iOS within the context of a student project. It was then iOS free. And in the falls, we created a new course that was then dedicated to iOS 4 and that was taught as a regular course to master students. And then uh, next year we followed with a new version of iOS and in 2012 the course was also recorded and made available on iTunes. And then there was another version of iTunes in 2013 and also uh, in 2014 uh, we tried to experiment in Sprig to do using these videos a MOOC that is a massively online open course, uh, a MOOC about iOS programming. It was 10 weeks long and we learned a lot from analyzing the behavior of the numerous participants, there were almost 3,000 participants, and how to optimize the courses and how to order the notions to be presented to uh, these students. And in false, a new course, a new version based on iOS 8 was presented followed in 2015 by another MOOC, in fact two MOOCs, because there were two parts, instead of having one part of 10 weeks, there were two parts with six weeks each, one more oriented to basics and the second one more oriented to advanced functions of iOS. At that time it was becoming difficult to rebuild the course every year because it's an area, it's true also for Android, that evolves very fast. And so it's really important uh, to uh, update the course. But it's also, you can imagine, you have to rerun everything, to reprocess every example from scratch. So it's very long if you want to be very precise. So we decided to update the course only every two years. But in 2015, uh, these MOOCs were already uh, up to date. And in the falls of 2016, we updated uh, this course on iOS 10. And then the videos were also posted on YouTube instead of iTunes. And in spring 2007, there were another edition of the two MOOCs, six weeks each. Uh, dedicated to iOS 10. And we come to 2018 where we produce a new release of this course. We are recording the first video a few days before the uh, launching of iOS 12 by Apple. In fact, this year the course is recorded in English because we are experimenting the share of courses between several European universities from the League of European Research Universities and some others and the idea is to increase the feasibility of foreign students to follow this course uh, by uh, internet. So this course benefits from numerous innovations uh, and this year, as uh, I just told to you, uh, English version. This course is built on online courses. So these videos, these are relatively short sequences in English, uh, available on YouTube via the uh, companion website. And you also have labs. Uh, especially at Sorbonne University, they are uh, every, um, almost every Monday from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, and for remote students, you also have the possibility to uh, perform the exercise. And we will see how we can 
have you delivered uh, this uh, exercise to the uh, teachers uh, for uh, some uh, feedback? The objectives of this course is mainly to let you master programming on smart devices. You have to deal with the basics of it. There are numerous needs these days and there are only a few experts, much fewer experts than it's required by the market. Okay? And also you have to understand that these smartphones and these applications have generated numerous new usages uh, in home automation, smart cities, uh, collaborative applications, etc., etc. But it will probably generate even more in the future. You also have to be able to navigate over the documentation. You always have to stick to the documentation. It's an always evolving area, so the documentation is updated regularly and it's important to be up to date with the latest version of the APIs. You also have to navigate between technologies. Of course, we will deal a lot with iOS programming, but there is also a part of the course at Sorbonne University, and I hope also for all the universities, that deal with Android. There are many common concepts, and there are also different processors and different ways to do the same thing. But you will see that a large part of the concepts you will see in details in iOS can be transferred to Android. And of course, it's important to practice. This is programming. And programming is not only a theoretical stuff, you also have to practice. I like to say that as for aircraft pilots, you need to have flying hours. And these flying hours are important because they give you confidence and they give you fluency in the way you drive your applications. And uh, at least it's important for the exam. So there will be an exercise every week. There will be a project also on the Android part. The contents of this course uh, that will last for 14 weeks, uh, there will be some weeks off uh, during the area of the path. So uh, we are starting in September and we will end uh, in, in January. So you have a uh, winter vacation and a few weeks that will be off also uh, in November. There is a first past that will last for 11 weeks. And I will present you this part that is dedicated to iOS 12 and we will also do a little bit of WatchOS 5. We will work using Xcode 10 and uh, it's a major update of the course as usual. So these videos will present you the state of the art as for iOS 12 and WatchOS 5. We will mostly work using the Swift language in its current version that is 4.2. And we will also do a little bit of Objective-C and I will talk about that later. Then there is a second part that will last three weeks that will be performed by Etienne Renault that deals with Android, but we will present you Android from iOS. So assuming that you have uh, assimilated the concepts of iOS. Mostly it will be the Oreo version and a little bit of the Pi version that is just getting out these days when I'm recording the video, of course. And so you will get at the end of this course a global vision on the area because as you know, aside iOS and Android, there is almost nothing. I know that students like to know a little bit uh, how they will be evaluated. So here is the function we will apply to you. There is a final exam that will take 65% uh, of the notation that will concern iOS only and that will be an exam on computer. So you will have a limited time, you, the computer, and we decide who wins. And of course, if you win well, you get all the points. Then there are labs. Labs are only about 10% of the note, it's all over the weeks. The labs is not important for the grades you will get from it. It's important because it forces you to practice regularly and to make you confident and to make you more fluent in uh, programming.
And also you have the Android part. The Android part is shorter in terms of time, but it's also quite important because uh, you cannot ignore Android in uh, programming uh, on mobile devices. So it will be 25% of the grades. You have, of course, uh, Macintoshes and everything will be set up for you to work with Xcode, etc., etc., at Sorbonne University. Uh, you have first in the Salsa, so the student at Sorbonne University uh, know very well where is this uh, room. And you also have another room at the fourth floor, that is uh, Salle 409, that is less used for uh, teaching and that can be a uh, lot of benefits. Uh, for students working the, when the salsa is occupied by other lessons. And of course, uh, for other students, but also for uh, Sorbonne University students, you can use your own devices and you may use your own Mac if you have one and also for uh, other uh, remote students uh, because now it's possible to have an individual li license for iOS uh, that allows you to uh, deploy uh, applications on your own device. An important thing, a lot of students over the years get used to retrieve code on the web for any language. Okay, It's very nice, it's very nice for languages that are quite stable, but in this area it's quite dangerous. Okay, I don't say you never have to go on the web. Especially, there are very useful websites such as Stack Overflow that provide very nice information. But in this area, you have to realize that it's also dangerous. Okay? Because, okay, there are two things. The first thing, it depends on you. It's nice to copy paste code, but it's better to understand it. Okay? And sometimes you copy paste code, I'm not sure that you really understand it. So be aware of that. But also, web code makes become incorrect very rapidly. I told you this is an area where the frequency comes rapidly. There are lots of evolution every year. Okay. And also you have to remind that there will be no internet connection during the exam. It's you and the machine and you against the machine alone, not connected to the web. So you will have to know what you want to do. As I already told you, you have hardware available at Sorbonne University. Aside the Macintosh, there will be several iPods and iPad mini, Retina, and iPad 4, etc. that will be borrowed to students. Uh, and there are also some other material, iPad Pro, Plus Pencil, iPhone Plus Watch, that will be uh, brought to you uh, for the uh, concern labs. And the idea is to let you share these and practice, okay? There will be also some Android terminals available for you, especially for the delivery of the project. Of course, the terminals, uh, the iOS terminals and the Android terminal will not be uh, in the uh, computer room. They will be uh, borrowed to students, individual students, that will be responsible for the material. And of course, you can use your own terminal if you have any. If you're interested, you have to contact me uh, and uh, we have to agree because you have to sign a document stating that this is a device from Sorbonne University. I would like to mention some main pedagogical choices. The first one is about the construction of user interfaces. We will mention several ways to do it, but we will deeply explore one of them only that is the programming mode. It's a choice because my feeling is that it's interesting to know how it works. What is the intrinsic mechanics of it? And you will discover that you have several ways to do it, including uh, user uh, drawing user interfaces uh, with a mouse, uh, but it's a sort of uh, magical. The second choice concerns memory management. It's a delicate problem in embedded systems. Even though the type of embedded systems that are mobile devices is now using automated mechanisms. Okay, but it's important for me that master students are aware 
of such a topic. And in fact, to be honest, uh, up to iOS 5, where ARC automatic reference counting was introduced, there, was there were no automated way to manage memory. So we will see how it was done before. It's a very classical and interesting mechanism that is visible in Objective C only. Okay, this motivates the fact that we keep a bit of Objective C. Uh, despite the fact that it's interesting, even if you are using Swift, that you are able to read Objective-C. So we come to the language part. We will do mainly Swift and a bit of Objective-C for memory management on the one hand, but also because it's still important, especially if you are to reuse existing code. Let's mention a little bit more about choice three. Objective-C is stable, syntactically, even if there are some changes of convention. We will not detail this, but uh, you have to know that purists know what I'm talking about. And Swift is becoming stable. Uh, Swift was introduced in June 2014, uh, and the first year, I know because in September 2014, I started to teach Swift. And code compiled in September was not anymore compiling in November. Okay, so it was terrible. Then there was a period where Swift gradually came toward stability. And we can say that since Swift 3, there is more maturity and more concern of Apple about backward compatibility. Okay, so Swift 4 was introduced in September 2017, and now we are at Swift 4.2, okay, supported by Xcode final version, as far as I know, because now when I'm recording this video, I only accessed the beta version of Xcode. But you have to remind, then source on the web vary a lot, especially for Swift, okay? Uh, so if you get some code that is two years old, probably it doesn't compile anymore. But you have to remember, and that concerns also Objective-C, that not only the language is evolving, but also the application programming interfaces, APIs. And so you may have a piece of code dealing with some APIs that has changed and that is deprecated. So you have to be careful with that. So let's come to some concluding remarks. First, some advice. Please practice regularly and possibly intensively. You have one app to build every week. Sometimes you even have two when they are simple, when they are complex, it's just one. So please do them. This experience increase understanding, remind these flying hours I already mentioned. You will be more fluent in the navigation of our concepts and documentation, etc, etc. So please complete your exercise. And so, I wish you good luck for your trip. This is a nice cruise. You probably will be able to manipulate those uh, sticks, if you see what I mean. And uh, the teaching people will probably be there watching how you progress and where you go in the domain of mobile device programming. Thank you for your attention. See you later.